Hello and welcome once again to a rather classic lab update. Because what I have, uh, I have some hardware for you on the table today. And um, yes, it's another attempt at making the perfect BMS. So um, I suggest let's take a look. So here it is. I'm shooting this for the second time because the first time was out of focus because I was holding it too close to the camera but now we can barely see it so uh let's see if i can lift it up for you so here it is uh, just get a little pointer for you so yes what it is is a 16 channel um, cell voltage sensing and balancing device and what we see in this entire array of a whole lot of transistors is uh, basically a discrete MUX. And to answer this question first, why did I go through all the trouble of making a discrete MUX and all this custom logic um, in a situation where there would be specialized chips to basically do all of that in just one chip? And the reason is... Uh, a for the heck of it and B because of the current chip shortage uh, I wouldn't want to be locked in with like one manufacturer BMS chip which can like go out of stock any day and then your entire design is unusable or unmanufacturable so yeah that's the why so what we see here is an input for 16 or in fact 17 cell tabs if we count the ground as well and then each of the cells goes to one of this input transistors and it's two p-channel transistors back to back because they have an internal diode and um, depending on the MUX configuration um, unwanted current would flow through the internal diode which we don't want and then here we have an n-channel MOSFET to enable the p-channel MOSFETs Okay, then here we have some simple 74 series logic. These uh, two chips are called decoders. Yeah, they can only activate one pin at a time. So that makes sure we, we're not switching on two MUX channels at the same time, because that would basically destroy the MOSFETs. So the upper chip, I believe, is for the positive output channel and the, ne uh, the other chip is for the negative output channel um, and each of these has eight outputs so what this means is that the even cells can only be connected to the negative um, output channel and the odd cells can only be connected to the positive or probably the other way around didn't really think this through and that has some implications that, uh, that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, yeah, then here we have some, some addition circuitry. And that makes sure that we can only switch on adjacent channels. So these two um, decoders see the same address signal or the same address signal plus one. So that's another hardware lockout to prevent any um, faulty turn-ons. And then here we have a simple isolator, just two channel isolator, clock and data. Um, and then we go on the primary side, which has uh, also some custom enable logic. Basically, um, this is an I squared C bus with chip select. So imagine um, these modules can be daisy chained. Oh, there it goes, gravity. Oh, well. um, can be daisy chained so we want to select exactly one unit that we want to talk to and this chip lets us select uh, between the ADC or the MUX and that on each module okay and then down here is what gives the name to this whole um, device which um, which I'm calling a flying ADC BMS and that's because we have an ADC here and that is floating it's not fixed to some uh, potential like to the primary side it's isolated 
with uh, a DC-DC converter into the cell tabs it's isolated via the MUX. And now comes the point that I meant um, about odd and even cells because it means that the input signal here is actually bipolar. So we can see plus 4 volts but we can also see minus 4 volts. And therefore this ADC is also bipolar differential input and uh, can handle that and we just need to change the sign in software. Yes, and then this design has another interesting feature and that is this H bridge right here. And that it's, it's an H bridge uh, again because of the um, polarization uh, topic again. And it lets us send the current from this DC-DC converter to the currently connected cell. So basically we can charge the currently selected cell with about 200 milliamps from this DC-DC converter, which forms some sort of active balancing. Say you have uh, four cells are reading low and uh, 92 cells are reading high, then we would have to dissipate energy from 92 cells to match the four cells that are reading low. And in this case we have the possibility to bump up the four cells that are uh, reading low by charging them from the DC-DC converter. And likewise I can imagine if we uh, put this bridge into a shoot-through configuration, basically shorting out the cell tap, um, that we can also to do dissipative balancing. This might require another resistor in the um, lead right here, but maybe it just works like that because the MOSFETs are all pretty high resistance types. So yeah, I will try it out, see if they burn up or if it just works. Yes, and the H bridge is con uh, controlled via this I squared C bus extender. Good. Now, having talked that through, let's do a bit of practice testing. So, currently I've configured the analog discovery to do some I squared C communication. Very basic, you see if, um, it has a scripting interface. Uh, so, yeah, basically I'm just reading the ADC right now and uh, before I, I did that I, I configured the ADC to run in 18-bit resolution mode. Yes, so I have connected. Uh, let me just swing you around one more time. I have connected the ADC inputs to my precision voltage reference down here. So uh, just to, to demonstrate its precision, I've currently set it to 4 volts. And let's see what the multimeter thinks. Yeah, 4.1. Four no, 4000.1 millivolts. So it's it's very accurate. And I'm just trying to um, so I'm just trying to kind of get a feel for the accuracy of the ADC in its maximum resolution mode. So um, what I have done here is uh, I calculated a, a gain factor or a division factor. Uh, by which I divide the output code to um, obtain the actual voltage. And that factor includes the resistive divider that's in front of the ADC. Yeah, and that happens to be 27.4111 and that has to be figured out for each individual PCB because the ADC and the resistors are going to have some tolerance. So let's take a look at what output code a 4 volt reading gives us. So 4 volt input voltage gives us. I'll just run the script through this button here. You see there's very little jitter. Just like one or two digits. Yeah, and if we type in the obtained data here, it's 1AC52 and that equates to um, yeah pretty much for what. Now I'm also quite interested in linearity. 
so I have, um, I have found this division factor, uh, 27 point something, um, at 4.2 volts. So does it still work at, say, 2 volts? Let's see. So let me program this to generate 2 volts. And let's, oops, let's take some reading. Oh, a little bit more jitter here. I've also found if I disconnect the power from my laptop, reading, reading sometimes becomes more stable <laughs> in this case. Okay, anyway, let's, let's go for this one. Um, so D6, 2F, yeah. And it's pretty much bang on, good enough for what we want to do. Yes, um, also on the I squared C bus is a um, little port extender that allows us to uh, to direct the voltage into the cell. And I will just quickly show you why this is a full bridge. Um, uh, what's the best way to show this? Uh, so basically, um, what we can do, we can connect the odd channels to the negative input and we can connect the even channels to the positive input. So that's kind of a fixed connection. Um, so it's easy when we connect cell 1, we connect a ground to the negative input and we connect cell 1 to the positive input, so we get a positive voltage on the ADC and also a positive voltage on this H bridge. So if, if we want to direct um, current from the DC-DC converter into the cell, we switch on, what do we switch on? Uh, this Q15 right here. That's what we want. So uh, yeah, that directs our positive VDDA to our P and we also switch on this uh, MOSFET down here that connects our ground to our negative. Now let's go to the next cell and now we have to keep um, connecting V1 to the positive input and now we connect V3 to the negative input but we, uh, sorry, V2 to the negative input which is actually higher than we want. So now our out negative is higher than our out positive. So if now if you want to direct um, current to uh, the cell and not short it out, we have to direct ground to out positive. So we need to close this Q20 right here and we have to connect VDDA to uh, out negative. So we close Q10. So you're always kind of flipping between diagonally between these and these. And if we don't want to do any balancing, we have to switch them all off. And that's also uh, not quite straightforward. It's pretty clear for the low side MOSFETs. Uh, we just output a zero on our port extender and that switches them off. But the upper ones are P-channel MOSFETs, so we have to tie the gate high in order to switch it off. So we have to output a 1 uh, on our port extender. Unfortunately, when the port extender starts up, it outputs all 1s, which basically switches off the upper ones, but switches on both lower ones. So we are kind of shorting out, out negative and out positive. So the first thing we need to do um, is yeah, configure the pins as outputs and switch um, them uh, to the appropriate configuration. So uh, what would that be? 0, 1, 0, 1. Or in hex 0xA. Yeah, and that's what this bit um, up here is doing. Let's comment. Let's, let's just execute all of it. Uh, yeah, so here we write a 10, 0x8 to the output port register. Then we configure all pins as outputs and then we read the register states, which is a bit redundant, but yeah, anyway. Let's take a look. Long row of data. So uh, yeah, 
here you can see we're reading back uh, what we are outputting. Yes, so next up I'm going to test uh, the MUX a bit. Um, I found quite some mistakes on the PCB already. The footprint of the 5 volt regulator was totally wrong, so I took it out and supplying 5 volt directly. Um, and also I switched polarity of some of the 74 series uh, inputs uh, chips. So the VCC and ground was uh, swapped. I fixed that. Um, yeah, and some other small little glitches. Yeah, so I'll do some MUX testing. I might show you something that's interesting. And next up is going to uh, to actually operate that thing from an STM32, for example. 